Currently, there's a lot of miscommunication and confusion going on in the Tonikahu Kawai community in relation to the status of the mini series called Fly Me to the Moon. And unfortunately enough, even YouTube does not help in this particular matter because there are no major videos explaining all of these things. Therefore, I decided to make a video explaining the entire mini series. So, hello and welcome to Underwise. My name is Soham, and today we are going to talk about the Tony Kaku Kawai mini series called Fly Me to the Moon. Because this is really interesting in my opinion, and Hatha has done a really impressive job in my opinion to mold the series in a very compelling story that involves a lot of historical elements as well as the entire story of reaching the moon. We will talk about all of these things in this particular video. But before that, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to our channel since I do weekly anime and manga related content along with a bunch of other stuff. With that being said, let's begin the video. Now, this confusion mostly arises because of two or three different reasons. First of all, Manga Dex is currently down because of all the shenanigans that happened in relation to its hack. And since Manga Dex is one of the major websites which produces or gives us fan translations, that is one of the major reasons why there's a lot of confusion appearing in the community. Because all of these other third party websites like tonikakukawaimanga.com, they are not providing the correct title for this series, and that is making everyone very, very confused. A lot of these websites are continuing the series in the format of the given date. That is the first chapter of the mini series, which should have been 147.1, is titled as 148. This is making a lot of different people confused as to what really happened to the story, and people who are not following up with the lore of the series are obviously confused because of this. And this has added a very peculiar situation. This is something which happened with Horimiya as well towards the very end, and unfortunately enough, this is also happening with Tonika Wukawai as well. Because the correct format should be in the following manner, that is Fly Me to the Moon is a mini-series which consists of 147.1, 147.2, 147.3 and 147.4. That is 4 chapters in total and the series is returning in chapter 148. The chapter is out as a raw but it is not yet English translated so I'm not going to talk about that. But unfortunately because of these third party websites, there's a lot of people who are very confused in this particular matter. Moreover, it also has to do with the naming scheme of the series worldwide because when the anime came out, there was a lot of confusion in relation to its name. Because on one hand it was being called Over the Moon for You, on the other hand it was called Fly Me to the Moon in the English translations and there were all the shenanigans in relation to the name Tony Kawa as well. But then again in the West, the Fly Me to the Moon name was dropped because of copyright issues because there's already a very popular song of this particular name. Now because of all of this, a lot of the fanbase is getting really confused. So let me just tell you all very briefly that this is just a mini series which explains the story of Sukasa. We get a lot of backstory and history about the series and this is going to be very interesting and very important for the future of this manga. And I will genuinely request each and every one of you to check out this mini series because this is just 4 chapters long. It, this takes place as a part of chapter 147 where Sukasa and Nasa are reuniting in the church. So I hope that this particular explanation is enough for you all and this is going to remove all the confusion that you currently have. Moreover, in relation to the story, this story takes place in the past and this gives us the entire backstory of Sukasa. Moreover, it takes inspiration from a lot of Japanese folklore and it also includes some very important historical characters as well. Now, first of all, the obvious reference is definitely given to Princess Kaguya tale that is very evident here. And in relation to this particular story, it is revealed here that Kaguya was definitely a real person who had to unfortunately leave for the moon in accordance to the original story. But she did leave behind the elixir of life in hopes that one day the emperor will be able to meet her once again. But the emperor was obviously distraught and devastated by all of these things and therefore he is not going to use this immortality serum or immortality elixir of life because there's no meaning in life without the existence of Kaguya. Therefore he told his trusted subordinate that is Iwakasa to burn this elixir of life on top of Mount Fuji which is going to be like a symbol of his love for her. But the story takes a turn here because Iwakasa is actually the father of Sukasa and at that very moment we also get a reveal of Sukasa and how she was a very caring person who used to care for all the villagers and people all around her. She used to gather dangerous herbs and made medicines for everyone and as such she was a very caring young girl. But because of her terrible fate, she was stuck with a very dangerous and deadly disease and she was almost about to die when Iwakasa actually took the elixir of life and gave it to his daughter. Basically, his love for his daughter overtook his responsibilities as the subordinate of the emperor because his love for his daughter is more than anything in this entire world. And that is basically the start of Sukasa's story. The next morning when Sukasa wakes up, she finds that all her sickness is finally gone. But unfortunately, soon she realizes that 
This entire thing has been a curse in her disguise because she's no longer a normal human being and the problem starts from that point onwards. Because as usual, she's conducting her job, she's gathering herbs and everything and she also meets a boy, a little boy whom she cures. But because of the curiosity of the little boy, he finds out the eventual truth about Sukasa when he sees that Sukasa falls down from a mountain but is still unhurt. That is the moment when he thinks that something is different and this little boy reveals this thing to the entire town and that is basically the start of Sukasa's misery because the entire town now turns their backs against Sukasa and she's confronted, her father is killed in a very gruesome manner and all the fluff element from the story is gone now. This is a really devastating moment for her life because the entire town is right after her and their humanity is totally gone. All the people whom she cared for, all the people whom she saved, all of them have turned their backs against them and they are all after her life because according to them, the flesh of an immortal being is going to save all their lives, it is going to get rid of all their diseases. And this starts the journey of Sukasa's pain because inevitably she has to take down everyone. This is an entire massacre and that is the end of chapter 3. Now in chapter 4, something very exciting happens because after all the shenanigans, she is wandering about in the night sky, she is just aimlessly wandering about, she has forgotten her real name, she has forgotten her real motive and she basically does not know what she'll do next because this is a curse for her. This is an absolute curse for her, the curse of being immortal where no one is going to accept her and she'll live a miserable, miserable life. And at that moment, she has the realization that maybe, just maybe, Kaguya will actually be able to help her because Kaguya is currently on the moon. So that is the very moment when she begs for Kaguya's help. She's asking that, please Kaguya, do help me. And then just all the usual shenanigans take place. But at that very moment, a very unexpected person appears, a person who is very different from all the people whom she has met so far. And this person is none other than Prince Umayado, or rather Prince Shotoko, who is a very legendary figure in the Japanese history. This was a real person who had a legendary status in Japan, whose face used to be printed in the original notes of Japan. Moreover, he was a key figure in the imperial family. Now, it is revealed here that he was a very kind-hearted person who had an ideal of growing his country, of growing his people, and basically the development of his people. Moreover, he was a very kind-hearted person as well, and he is actually the person who gave Sukasa her name, because Sukasa at that point had totally forgotten her real name. He also reveals that he's not after her to kill her or eat her flesh, but rather he just wants her help. He wants to build a new nation and he also reveals how the Sui country is after them. I feel like this is a reference to China or rather the Sui dynasty of China, which somewhat actually gives us a real time frame. Because this actually takes place somewhat around 550 CE to 620 CE and therefore in current timeline we can very well say that Indeed, Sukasa's story is 1400 years old. She has been a 16 year old who has been stuck for 1400 years. Moreover, something very interesting which happens here is that Prince Umayado also promises to her that he is going to take her to the moon. Now, he obviously admits that he currently does not possess the power or the knowledge to take her to the moon, but if he is able to establish a proper nation, then he's sure that someone down the line, someone who is a descendant of him, will definitely make her dream come true. Because at the end of the day, Sukasa is an immortal, she is obviously going to survive, and she is obviously going to meet the descendant of Prince Umayado. And that leads us to the present day Sukasa. She has seen a lot over her time. She has been governing this entire country, she has been through the history of this country, and she has seen a lot of people rise and fall. But unfortunately enough, none of the descendants of the prince have been able to fulfill her dream until Nasakun arrives on the scene and of course this is a reference to the finale of the series. The final goal is set here, the quote unquote one piece is set here which is obviously going to be the moon. NASA's dream, NASA's aspirations and NASA's journey now is to get Sukasa to the moon. That is going to be very interesting, that is going to be very awesome and I'm so happy that Hatha has been able to establish all of these things and link all of these things to the modern day as well. This is going to be a very amazing journey and the plot is actually really good in the midst of all the fluff and everything. This mini series provides us with some very 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 important stuff and if you are a fan of the series you absolutely need to watch this. Moreover this also gives us precedence that Nasa is maybe a reincarnation of this prince himself because at the end of the day he also got a vision of seeing Sukasa in the past which is obviously a reference to the prince himself. So all of these things are absolutely amazing in my opinion and I'm really happy that this series actually took place. This is a very small story of just about 4 chapters and you should definitely give it a go. So this is the entire story of Fly Me to the Moon. So what do you guys think about all of these things? Please do let me know in the comment section below. Also, please give this video a thumbs up if you like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for more. This video took me a long time to make so it would be really awesome if you guys could subscribe to the channel. 
that is going to be really helpful for me and let's just hope that we reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Also, please do join the channel membership for some very cool perks and features. With that being said guys, this is Wonderwisey and I'll see you soon on the next one.